and from 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 Africa, you came back to to Canterbury, yes, eventually um, to to this area spe specifically. We had bought a, a house. Uh, we were paying for a house in Canterbury. My parents were there, so one tends to gravitate mm. towards relations or friends, and that's what happened to us. We mm. simply stayed there. Yeah. And did you? Did you then concentrate on your own work, or did you go back into education? No, I didn't go back into education. I came back and I thought, I want to paint. I didn't ask my wife, Janet, whether it was okay. <laughs> and uh, I mean, she, she deserves tremendous credit because I worked for four years. We came back with sufficient savings to scrape along. We had a young daughter of eight years uh, who was who really needed to come back for, to go to school. Um, and we, we somehow survived. Janet used to do homemade wine and I think we, we had a big treat at the end of the week which was fish and chips. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it didn't do us any harm and we, we, we survived. Um, and I was back in England and it was very hard because it was, there was culture shock again um, by returning to England. Uh, I was thinking you're going to say something else. No, I've forgotten what it was. It'll come back. It'll come back. Yeah, it, it, it always does. <laughs> <laughs> trust, trust the unconscious, I say. Um, so you, for four years though, you, you were focusing on your work. Oh yes, you, that's right. Were, yes, I was going to say, thinking. not once did my wife complain. I mean, there's a model for you. Uh, four years, and then after four years, I, I, the painting got going, and I thought, I, I'm. I'm there. It's, it's just working. Uh, I can. I'm on a moving path. I found a. I found a thread. And uh, I remember we were on the other side of the bed making the bed one morning, and I said, "I think, I think at this point I like, got a job as a taxi driver." And she said, "What about this job at Christchurch College?" <laughs> in, the, in the local paper she'd been reading, and I got it. <laughs> it was only a part-time job, uh, and they, they were never, I must say, they were never very generous. They never offered me a full-time job until, oh, right at the end of the eight year, 13 years I was there. Uh, part-time, half-time, um, but anyhow, it gave me also time to paint. But, uh, but it was lovely, I must say, lovely going back into, into that. I used to go in seven days a week. I couldn't keep away from the place. We'd go going to see if students were making something. Yeah. Um, yes. You enjoy but, you enjoy you enjoy being with students. Oh you? yes, I love yes. it. Yes, yeah. I love it. Especially those particular students. They want they're interested. In. I feel like I can do something for them, mm -hmm. things for them. Yes, they're they're, they're lovely. They're, they're, they're late. So you, when, you, when you were on the train this morning, it was almost like a carriage full of little students oh, for you. Yeah, <laughs> well, they are irresistible. I mean, yeah. there's such a um, fraught anxiety these days about anybody who's over the age of about seven talking to a child. Uh, but I go into the National Gallery, for instance, and you see these little lines of gorgeous little sort of uh, dwarfs coming through holding hands and then uh, they sit round and they, they listen to somebody who's talking about a painting and I, I just stand there and make drawings of them and they're sort of like this or they're flat on the floor making drawings and uh, absolutely irresistible. Uh, I tr just try not to be too friendly. It's very <laughs> difficult. <laughs> I think the older I get, uh, the younger children are that I like. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, um, you, you were at Christchurch, uh, uh, University College Canterbury, uh, and then you retired, believe it or not, many years ago now. 96, 96, yes, yes it is. Yes. And, and since then you've been as productive, if not more productive, in the work that you've been doing. It's gone on, yes. I think probably at about the same sort of rate of production. And how about the enjoyment? Do you find it your... What, 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 what does it feel like for you making work? Why do you make work? You've done it. There's a lot of things here in the, the exhibition. Um, uh, if I had done all this during one lifetime, I would, I would have been well pleased. Oh, really? um, yeah. <laughs> uh, this quality, yes. So why, why do you keep going? What, what is it that leads you to do the next thing and the next thing? What, tomorrow you'll pull out your sketchbook yet again. Why? That's right. 
It's my life. It's what I do, and if I don't do it, then I'm lost, quite honestly. And I think uh, most artists would probably say the same thing. It's what I do, and I know Janet and I have breakfast in the morning, and I do the washing up. She does, that doesn't mean to say I do all the housework. I, <laughs> <laughs> I do the washing up, and occasionally do the cooking. And then I go upstairs to my studio. It's just a normal routine. I, I go out and fill the bird bath, um, look over the embankment of the passing train, and uh, go up to my studio and try and work. But the idea that it's such a pleasure doesn't exist, I'm afraid. It's just what I do. And uh, for the most part, I could probably say, God, I, I just hate painting. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so unfriendly, mostly. It's just so unhelpful. <laughs> you're, st you're still struggling with that life model, aren't you? I think I've managed to put life model aside, actually. But yes, whatever it is you do, you struggle. Yeah. But it's all, uh, also, I, th I find... Uh, this is my response to, to the sculptures, um, is that they, they have tremendous compassion about them mm -hmm. um, and at the same time a, 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 a tremendous respect for the, for the figure that's being made. I mean, I'm very conscious that you, just behind your head here is one of my favourite little pieces that you've done, mm -hmm. the, the, the mother and child. And I think that the, 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 the exchange of gazes between mother and child in that, in that little piece is beautifully caught. Mm. Um, and it's, well, not beautifully caught, that's the wrong word. It's not as though it's captured something, it has become something. Um, and it's got an extraordinary tenderness to it. I think I agree with that. And it's also an illustration of what I learnt from the life class, of course, mm -hmm. because I have no model for that. Except life itself. Oh. <laughs> There's a cliche that you were waiting for. <laughs> so um, now we've had this exhibition and we've got some sculpture, we've got some painting, we've got some examples of drawing. Um, what for you is the, I suppose, do, do, you, do you see as being the most important of those for you? Or is that the wrong kind of question? Do you, do, you, do you turn from one to the other? Um, as far as painting and sculpture are concerned, yeah. there's two things. Oh, I think neither has more, neither than has more than the weight than the other. No, I don't think no. So. But, they, but they do offer you different kinds of challenge. Oh, absolutely, yes. How would you, how would you characterise those? What are the kinds of challenge that you get in, say, painting? And what are the kinds that you get in? Sculpture. Again, that's, it's extremely difficult to put that into words. I think with the, with the sculpture, what I want to achieve is something to do with stability, a, a, con, a constrained tension as well, and, and weight. The, the sculptures that I particularly like are Egyptian, Oriental, Chinese, standing figures, sculpture with not too much movement, sculpture which is figures that are self-contained, quiet, monumental, this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Painting, no, there's much more activity going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what, an example that we, that we have uh, actually with us here in the room is in, in the window, we have uh, uh, the, the, the blind girl with the bar, the bird. Is it a dove or a... It is a pigeon come dove. It's a, a kind of bird, yes. Yeah. Um, and um, one of the things that uh, strikes me about that, that piece is it has tremendous inwardness. Mm. It's almost as though she may be blind on, in, in, as it were, seeing the outside world, but she's not blind on seeing the inner world um, at all. And uh, it reminds me very, very strongly of all sorts of... Uh, 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 mythological figures from Tiresias on, um, the, 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 and this notion that the, that the blind see beyond the mundane presence. Mm -hmm. um, was that part of your thinking when you were making the sculpture? I don't um, think so, although it, although it may have been, mm, without my mm, putting it into words. Well, we keep coming back to this 
this thing of um, something that's there, but you're not entirely conscious of it. And the, the un unconscious in that sense is something which is very important to, in the artistic process, I think. I don't think anybody would tell you this. You sometimes step back and you've made something, you're not quite sure how, how that happened. And you'd like to go back and actually make a record of how it, how it did happen. But somehow you, you were gone and you made it and then you come back again and it's there. Yes, the, make, the making comes from a space which doesn't have language, which doesn't have words. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's true very often of people who work with words as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it's very interesting that, that you're very good with words. I mean, you, you, you are a, a considerable writer in your own right. Um, and, and yet, the, the, the process of making sculpture, the process of painting, um, these are these are activities which escapes the net of words.